Spencer, thank you for joining me today. How are you? I am fan freaking fantastic. It is such a blessing to be here. Thank you for giving me the space and time. I appreciate it. You are quite welcome. I'm excited to talk to you. We just started talking briefly before we hit record and you have great energy about yourself. You are doing amazing things in this world. So I'm excited to dive into all of that. But first and foremost, who are you? Ooh, good question. I am Spencer Jones, also known as the Prince of Positivity. Uh, I must be happy or positive or something like that, I guess. But uh, I'm a person who loves to help uh, bring out other people's light. I consider myself an igniter, the igniter of other people's lights to really help them shine bright, bring out the, the joy in their life, fill their hearts with love and joy. There's so much negativity in the world. Let's bring more positivity to it, hence the Prince of Positivity. Uh, but I'm a person who loves to challenge himself and grow, you know, from everything from doing a ninja course stuff, obstacle course races, push myself physically to mentally trying different things with meditation and just really working to to hone in my body so I could function at my best, right? So that I'm highly functional and that I can <laughs> do the best that I can so I can live my life to the max. And I look basically the one of boil it down to one thing. I just love helping people live their life to the max, whatever that looks like to them. Awesome. Now I know a lot of people who are very passionate about what they do in the world, including myself, um, do it because of their past, whether it's injuries, mm -hmm. traumas, life situations, whatever. Um, what, like, what does that journey look like for you to be like, bring you to where you are today? It's so true how so many of us have these different journeys, right? Different circumstances that happen that led us here. We, we are all led by some something, some way, shape, or form. For me, it came by the way of, of being overweight. I really disliked the way I looked and felt to, oh, about nine years ago, actually even before that, almost 15 years ago. Uh, I really did like the way I looked and felt. I looked in the mirror, didn't like myself. I was just married at that time and I couldn't stand it. It was the heaviest I've ever been. And I said, this needs to change. Well, I was working at a YMCA at the time. And so I had a free membership, I'm like, all right, let's go. So I was in college during this time, but it was summer break. So I'm like, perfect. I went three, four days a week, nothing crazy, but I was there for an hour, hour and a half each time over that summer. Watch what I ate, worked out. I lost 30 pounds. Hip, hip, hooray. Yes, I'm, I'm rocking it. College starts up again. And I gained that weight back over the next, I gained about 20 pounds back over the next however many years until about nine years ago. When I started going, you know, I don't like the way I look and feel again. I feel tired. I feel drained and uh, something needs to happen. So um, my brother-in-law is a big fitness guy, likes working out, doing those things. And we bought him that P90X program, that extreme home fitness program a couple of years before that. And he did it. He dabbled, but he never fully committed. And when I said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of this. Let's do something. Let's change it. Can you help me? It's like, yeah, let's do it. And then, so he, he created a workout. We did it once or twice. He's like, you know, I have that P90X program that, that I never really did. What do you think about doing that? And uh, I'm like, I'm game. Let's, let's go for it. So we did P90X all the way through. I've done it two or three times now, plus many other um, at-home workout programs. But essentially, for me losing then to now where I am 40 pounds, uh, to where I feel more energized. I feel alive. I'm, I'm just ready to go and have that life again. I like the way I look and feel that. Yeah, sure. There's things I'd like to improve or change, but that's okay. It always gives me something to work on, but that geared me up to work on myself. And it started with the body. How do I look? How do I feel? And then that led me to do personal development mindset. And because the people around me, we're doing uh, physical fitness, we're starting to work on themselves, starting to read personal development. And they were suggesting it. And I'll be perfectly honest. I had wanted nothing, zero interest in doing it because I'm, I was a teacher. Uh, I was a middle school, high school choir director for nine years. And we had the professional development days, you know, the in-service days where we had speakers come in and do this work. And it was just annoying and baloney. It was a waste of my time. It felt like the majority of the time. Now, I realized looking back, those probably a lot of had to do with my mindset, but a lot of the teachers felt that way and it just rubbed off on me. So I'm like, no, I won't do personal development. I'm good. I'm good without it, right, whatever. So they, they left me alone for a little bit, but they just kept suggesting it here or there, but very politely. And uh, then I said, all right, let's give it a fair shake. Let's, let's do this. I hated reading at the time. So I did an audiobook. It was Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. So I listened to that book. 
and took action on the first thing. Like I'm listening to this, I'm going to take action on, right? Do, do the steps to see, to give this a fair shake to see if it's really worth anything. So I did. And I listened to it on my 30 minute commute to work, was at school, took action on the thing. The next day I went, holy crap, this is amazing. Like I already feel like stuff has been taken off my plate. I feel more focused and holy crap, like, I can't believe this. Just in the first day, the first day. And so from then on, I started taking action with more and more things and really got hooked almost instantly with it. More and more audiobooks. and a friend turned me on to other personal development books, uh, Chop Wood, Carry Water, The Energy Bus, two of my favorites that got me into reading. And after 30 plus years of hating reading, um, I fell in love with it. And now I just love to read uh, mostly personal development, but other things as well. And so that led me on this whole personal growth development journey, which leads me here today of helping other people do what I do. So that was a really extremely long-winded answer for that question, but uh, there you go. <laughs> well, I liked the answer, even if it was long-winded. <laughs> You mentioned in there um, towards the end, something huge that I think is, you know, I think it would, is super important to dive into and that's taking action. You know, a lot of us have these ideas of, I want to do X, Y, Z in my life, but don't take action. Or, you know, how many people do we talk to? It's like, I read 50 books this year. Like, awesome. Did you do anything with any of that information you learned? Like, if not, I'm not sure if it's helping you much. Um, and then there's, you know, that taking action is so important to achieving anything that we want. Right. That's huge. Right? You need to take action to, to see the results. That thing. As you said, you could listen, you could read so many books. I read 50 books this year. Good for you. You got the knowledge in there, but are you taking action on it? Are, are you taking the, the actionable steps to get the results that you want? Um, I listened to a podcast and I can't remember the specific term, but it's basically like a podcast overload. Like, okay, cool. They have 400 episodes and you can binge listen to all of them, right? Cool. But are you really learning? Are you taking away those action steps? I'd much rather have you listen to five, 10 podcast episodes that resonate with you, that, that title, that the, the copy of it, like, okay, yeah, that, that would really help me out. I'm going to listen to this. And I'm going to take action on it. Oh, they suggested these steps, these strategies. I'm going to take action on that. And then once you've done those, then you could go back and go for more, but take that action steps. Everything is action, right? It's so great to say, oh yeah, I would love to do this. Oh, I'd love to go on this vacation, or I want to lose this weight, or I want to run this race. Awesome. But it's just a dream. It's just a thought, which is cool, but you have to take action on it. And maybe that action is to sign up for that race, right? To do that. Maybe the action step is, oh, I'm going to do my first workout, or I'm going to write my gratitudes, or I'm going to do whatever that step is. It doesn't have to be a big step, but you need to start taking action. And then not just once. Here's a kicker, right? Like if you want to lose weight, like for me, losing that 40 pounds, Great. I worked out one day. Yay. I was sore as heck the next day. I didn't want to work out, but I did because it's consistency. Take that consistent action. It doesn't have to be big action, but consistent action. Uh, that's what's going to get you to that end result. That's what's going to get you to your goal at some point, some, at some time, right? I'm not guaranteeing the time frame, but you will get to it if you keep taking that action. So don't be afraid of it. It's okay to be uh, I was going to say, it's okay to be afraid of it to a degree, especially if it's a big, hairy thing, something new and different for you. Awesome. But see where it's going to go and let that fear and, and nerves is also excitement. It's the same energy that excitement is. So let's look at it as excitement and use that to launch you into wherever you want to go to your dreams. Yeah, that consistency part is, is definitely huge because, you know, so many people, I mean, look at January and New Year's resolutions and all these gym memberships. And then by February or even half those people going like, you have to stick through to um, stick to things. Um, but I think at least for me personally, the way it kind of, I view it, like there's definitely things I've taken action on in my past that it's like, awesome. This is great. It's working. We're going to stick through to this. But then I think that you're, we get these things that's like, after 30 days, it's like, oh, like I have to do this today. And you kind of get this negative connotation about it. And, and I think that's where it's good to kind of, we have to reassess and reflect for ourselves. Like, 
is this action the worthwhile one for me or is it bringing me down or is it not making me happy and and like yes consistency is important follow through is important but is it making you happy at the same time action for the sake of action is not worth it right if you're just taking the action steps just to take them well then what's the point so i i love that i love the question and the way you phrased it <laughs> because as you said, you get 30 days in, right? You're doing this workout program for 60 days, let's say, and you're on day 30 and you're like, oh my God, I have to get up and I have to work out again and do this. It's just, it's so boring. I don't see what this is doing, right? Maybe you're not seeing the results or feeling the results. And it's hard, especially if you're taking that, consist, uh, that action daily, because what happens on a day-to-day -day basis, we just get accustomed to it. We get accustomed to, oh, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm at every day. And it doesn't seem like we're growing at all. So I'm trying to think of the best way to break this down. Um, we'll, we'll keep with that analogy. You're taking it every day, taking action every day. You're at day 30. Well, you are farther than you were in day one, farther than you were in day two, day three, day four. You're not quite where you want to be yet, right? You're not at day 60 for, let's say, think of this as a 60 day thing. Okay, but you're in the middle. But it doesn't feel like the middle. It feels like you're stuck. It feels like you're not getting anywhere because you just haven't seen a ton of progress. Well, that's when you want to reflect back. Most people, a lot of people say, don't look back, don't look back, right? The rearview mirror is a bad thing. And it is if you do it long term, right? You don't want to be driving down the road looking in a rearview mirror the entire time. But we do want to look at it occasionally. And so when you are day 30 and you're feeling stuck or whatever day it is, right? Whenever you feel stuck, take a look back and just see how far you have grown. See the, the improvements you have had, the changes you have made, the growth that you have had in that 30 days or whatever that time frame is for you, it doesn't matter, but just look at that growth and then use that as excitement, as an energy to go, oh my God, look how much I've grown so far. Look at what I'm doing, right? Um, uh, I'll, I'll pick a, a different physical example. So I like, I'm learning to do handstands. I've been working on this now for a year and a half because I've always wanted to in, in any case. The first time I tried doing handstands, I could not do it, could not do it. And I kept taking action week after week after week. I had a friend come over, we're accountability partners, we're working on handstands. Well, after about three weeks, I could get up and, and into a handstand and hold it for like a second or two, right? And we're not talking anything crazy, but like, okay, cool. But then by week, mm, let's say it was week three, I was there. By like week six, seven, I was still going up there, but I was only holding for maybe two, three seconds. So I'm going, oh, my God, it seems like I've been here for like four weeks. For a whole month, I haven't progressed. But what, when I look back, I realized, oh, but I'm getting up more often, right? I'm not necessarily holding it at longer, but I'm getting up to that handstand position more often than I was before. So now fast forward a year and a half, I'm getting up to a handstand generally, um, we'll say 75% of the time. And I'm holding them for anywhere between 15 to 30 seconds each time, which is cool. Like, yes, I'm a huge improvement from where I was a year ago, but it wouldn't have happened unless I kept taking those actionable steps. And even now I go, oh my gosh, I tell John, my partner who comes over and, and we work out together. I'm like, oh, it feels like I'm just stuck here. And he goes, yeah, but look how far you've come. You're not stuck. You're just you feeling it because last week you did close to the same thing. So now you're just getting stronger, getting stronger. And since then, uh, which was about two weeks ago, we had that conversation. I've been hitting about 90% of the time, right? So then you just have to shift the metrics that you're looking at. And I just want to point out, that, like, where are you going? What's your goal? So keep this all in mind of trajectory of where do you start? Where are you going? Where are you in that process? What growth have you had? But then also to your comment is, are you enjoying it? Is it bringing love into your heart? Is it bringing love to the world, joy into your heart? Are, is it still enjoyable? If it's just absolutely miserable the entire time, well, then it's probably not the right thing for you or the right, right thing to do for you at that point in your life. And that's okay. Evaluate, right? You always, almost always want to be constantly evaluating, saying, okay, is this worth it? Is it not worth it? Now, I'm thinking of my own physical journey and fitness journey of losing that weight. And there's days I did not want to work out at all, right? I was tired. I was sore. I was, I woke up tired, whatever it was. I didn't want to work out. So I could have said, well, oh my gosh, this sucks. I'm not having any fun with this. But I also know that that's my initial reaction. 
But as soon as I get down to my basement where I work out and start lifting weights or start doing the routine, or I go out to my ninja course and push myself or whatever, I love it. And I feel really good afterwards. And I know that that gets me close to my goal. So sometimes it's a momentary thing of like, mm, I'm not enjoying this. Let's, let's work through it. Let's move past it because I know there's more joy, more fulfillment coming up on the other side. That's awesome. But if it's constantly like, what's the point of this? Why am I doing this constantly? Well, then, then it's time to evaluate and see what you need to change. Maybe it's a different goal. Maybe you back out of that one, do something else. And that's okay too. And that's a great thing to point out there is, yeah, we did, we all have those situational times of just like, I'm tired. I don't feel like doing this, but you know, you put your shoes on to get out the door. Maybe it's just, you tell yourself you're going to go for a walk. And then before you know it, you're jogging or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it is that day after day. And, you know, of like, I hate this. I don't want to do this. And that's the beauty of being so many or that there's so many different things you can do phys physical activity. There's so many different books you can read because that book, your friend loved, you might get five pages in and just like, this is the dumbest thing ever, <laughs> but there's thousands of other books you can go find or podcasts. And, um, and it really is, I think finding that thing for yourself, that's going to get you your progress. It's finding what resonates with you, right? As you said, that book might not be the book for you, for your best friend. Great. It's awesome. It's like when you go listen to a speaker, whether virtually or in person, they're speaking and you look over at your friend and they're thinking, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. They're hyped, they're amped up and you're going, what is this person talking about? Like, this is just, it's just not resonating with you. And that's okay. What's cool about being human. We are all unique. We are all amazing in our own ways. What resonates with your friend might not resonate with you. What resonates with you might not resonate with your friends and that's okay. All right. So, so know that don't judge yourself. Don't judge other people with it as hard as that is. Just go, all right, let's see what resonates. See what fits me, what vibrates with me. And usually for me, at least what I've noticed with me and my clients is when we open ourselves up to it, man, oh man, all of a sudden things start aligning. When I started opening myself to energy, you and I met and we started to see, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Oh, you do obstacle course race. Oh, you help people do this. And oh, I do this. Like, And now we're, we're here together chatting. It's incredible what happens when you open yourself up to the world, to vibrations, God, prayer, whatever you want to consider it. You open yourself up to it because then it's it's almost like they're they're coming to you. And, and it, that's gorgeous as opposed to forcing it, right? When you force it, mm, it doesn't work most of the time. It's so like, for someone who doesn't like, hasn't read into it or like looked into it at all, like it all seems so very much out there, but it's so true. Like the energy we hold is the energy we attract. And that like, if you hold that negative, angry, sad, depressed, you know, frustrated energy, then those are the people are going to attract in your life. If you have the like joy, excitement, happiness, all that, like those are the people you attract. And, and it's a hard thing to make that shift. There's, it definitely takes work to make those shifts, but it's so beneficial when you can. It's, it's so true. Uh, I think I'm going to steal a word from my friend, um, Brian Bogart, uh, his phrase, it's trust, surrender and breathe. That's Brian Bogart's big saying. And so I think a lot of that comes down to surrendering, which another word for that would be letting go, letting go of those expectations, letting go of that anger, the frustration, the expectations, the, the walls, the of armor that we hold up. If we let those dissolve, if we let those go, we surrender to, to that openness that we're seemingly afraid of. Well, then we start to feel that vibration. We can start to feel that love, that energy. We can feel that negativity, almost as this darkness bringing us down. We can feel that light come in and raise us up. And it sounds really woo-woo. I totally get it, right? If you're not used to this, you're like, okay, Spencer, you just, you're off the deep end now. Like, you're okay at first, but now you're going crazy <laughs> on us. But, uh, you know, like, I, I get it, right? I used to think the same thing. And then I, I read into it, learned more about it, quantum physics. It's a crazy thing. Um, but our energy is really, we have an energy inside us, right? You have that energy. And you can call it your soul if you like, whatever. But we have this energy inside of us. And if you allow that to shine, if you allow that just to be you and let that light just shine itself without any prerequisitions, any prerequisites, any quali qualifications, anything like that qualifiers for, you're just like, now nah, this is me, right? Oh my gosh, it is so freeing. 
but it's also really scary because we've been conditioned and built to, oh, I have the, all these walls up, I have these all these armors, uh, all these walls, probably the best way to say it, all the armor or walls up to protect us, mm -hmm. when in reality, they're stopping us from being our true selves. I used to be the king of putting on faces and, and being this person at this place and this person at this place. I was a different person with my friends than I was with my family, than I was at work. And then we had a housewarming party and all three, all three groups came together. I'm going, I, this is so weird. I, I can't do this. And now I don't have that because I'm just me. I'm just me. And it's so free, but yet it's scary because it's something new and something different. Mm -hmm. When yeah. you open yourself up to it, and, and as you said, then your energy resonates and it calls and brings in similar energies to you. Yeah, that's, that's hard to be three people at once. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know how I did it. I'm sitting on our steps with my wife and I'm looking at the different rooms in our house and I'm going, oh my God. And this was, uh, uh, I think like, sorry, after like 13 years ago, um, right before I really started to do a lot of personal work on, on myself and, and letting the armor go, I'm looking around going, okay, I'm this person around this person, this group of people. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm more business-like with this group. I'm like, but how do I interact with them? Like, uh, are they going to talk to each other? This is going to be weird. Like, what if I, did I go up to them to get, they're in their own groups, their pods. I could do that, but how can we do it as a group? But it all worked out, but it made me also realize why am I being a different person in each of these circles? Why yeah. can't I just be me? And that, and that was a stipulation that I, I've heard when I was telling other people about this years ago, well, that's just what it is. You know, you're just, you're like that at work or you're like this with your friends, right? And there's certain little things, right? I might be more mellowed and relaxed around my friends and, you know, just say different things or whatever than I would be at work. But overall now I have that same energy and that's just who I am. I, I might curse more around my friends than I do in a business setting. Cool. But outside of that, it's just, it's just me. And yeah, it's, it's really cool. I don't know how I did it. So if you're doing that, slowly work on letting that out. I mean, if you could drop it right away, great, but that's hard to do. Yeah, absolutely. Have you read the, uh, uh, was it the surrender experiment? I have not. No, I had to think about that. I'm not yet. Is, I'm blanking on the author. I, I have to say, I love the stand up desk, by the way. I'm not <laughs> sure she'll be watching this, but I love that. Oh, she just like walked off to the, the bookshelf <laughs> behind her. I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so the surrender experience experience, it's Michael Singer. Okay. Um, he basically took, I can't remember if it's a year or two years or the amount of time, but basically took a year and like, obviously nothing like stupid. That's going to get you like killed necessarily. But basically if opportunities came into a life, his life, he just surrendered and he's like, would say yes. And just kind of see where it took him. And it's pretty cool. Like where it led like him and his business and his personal life. That's awesome. I will definitely have to check that out and, and give that a read. That sounds awesome. It's amazing what happens when you surrender and you let go and, and say yes to the right opportunities. I, I love that you brought that up. Just, it made me think instantly of how many times do we say yes to things in our life? Because we just want to appease the other person, mm -hmm. right? We was just, we're yes people. I was a yes person for years, I still struggle with it. But uh, once I realized what are my priorities, what's important to me, then, then I, align that, use that as a compass, I like to say, for for the choices, opportunities that come my way. So, okay, cool. I get to go climb Mount Everest. Hasn't happened yet. Who knows? I'm not sure. I'd, want to, but I'm, I'm not sure. I'd go to the base. We'll say, go to the base of Everest um, or, you know, whatever, this other opportunity. Which one aligns with my priorities at that time, right? What, with, with what my goals are, my priorities, uh, my... Uh, Oh my gosh, no, sure, of course, now I'm blanking on all this stuff, right? But like, what's important to me? What matters to me? Um, does it align? If it does, and, and I have time for it, then I say yes. If it does not align, if it does not fit my prior priorities, then I say no. If it aligns with my priorities, but I don't have time, mm, it's still probably going to be a no, <laughs> most likely, unless I have to shift things and adjust other things or say no to something else. So knowing what's important to you, what matters, what's your purpose, what's your priorities, right? What's your mission, all that stuff. If you know that, it makes those decisions a lot easier. So I love that he did that and said yes to these different opportunities. That'd be a fun book to check out. Yeah. And you just said something huge that I, I think is really 
overlooked a lot. And I used to be that yes person as well, saying yes to way too many things and with both business and personal life and got myself involved in way too many things. It just didn't make sense. And yeah, when you take a moment to just really ask yourself when like someone asks you to do something or get involved in something and really deciding like, is this going to like move my needle forward to where I want to go? Or is it going to just kind of hold me back or, you know, and, and I think that can, one, it free, well, one, it helps you get your goals faster, but two, it just frees up so much space. Um, you know, how many people do we talk to who are just so overwhelmed with so many things going on now, granted, I get it. If you have five kids and running in five different directions for school events, like totally get it. <laughs> but at the same time, like we can still like set priorities in our life on those other things we're going to do. Like maybe we're not going to be part of the parent teacher association. Maybe we're not going to be a coach for our kids team. Um, you know, there's all those little things that we can probably say no to if we like really start analyzing things. How easy it is for us to say yes to those opportunities because we want to please people, but we also think it would be good for us or the family and all of a sudden our plates are overflowing and we celebrate being busy in, in our society. We celebrate just everything happening and we're running from here, there and everywhere. And it's not bad to be busy. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, right? I like keeping myself busy, but I also know that there's value in that slow time, in the dead time, in the time to be bored when you don't have a phone in your face or the TV on, because that's when you can be creative. That's when you, your mind starts to, to wonder and start to think and you can dream. And when we're constantly busy and going, 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 well, we don't have time for that. And it drains our batteries that much faster because you don't have time to recharge. That slow time, that dead time, whatever you want to call it, is a time for your batteries to recharge. So I, I'm not opposed to go, go, go. I'm a person who likes going pedal to the metal. Let's go. But I also know I build in breaks. Like my wife and I just got back from a week long vacation in Boston where, yeah, I did a couple business things here or there throughout the trip, but it was very, very minimal as in like five small things that took maybe five, 10 minutes each. And that was it for a whole week. And then we were just off enjoying being tourists in Boston. And for us, that was amazing. And I, feel, I came back, uh, we came back Saturday and I'm going, all right, let's go. Like, I can't wait to, to jump back in. And I have new ideas, new zest, new energy, because I took that break. Now that break could be a week long trip, but it could also be 30 seconds to stop and breathe, right? In a busy, busy day. When I was teaching um, middle school, high school choir, I had my full-time job there. I had uh, I was a church musician. I was a music director for the musical that was happening. I was getting kids ready for solo ensemble. Like, I mean, it was nuts. I was running 18 hours a day, 17, 18 hours a day of school stuff alone, let alone coming home, trying to spend a little time with my wife, which rarely ever happened because school was so busy. Plus, and I had to get some sleep and work out and do all this other stuff, right? That I had no time. So for me, my breaks were, I took 30 seconds. And I stopped and I breathed in between classes when the bell rang because we're coming in. I just looked outside and I breathed. Um, other times when I had maybe a half hour here or there, I stopped, I breathed, I went for a short walk. Little things like that. Now, I'm ridiculously happy I don't have that crazy busy schedule now. That was more when I was a yes person saying yes to all these different things. I would say no to some of those now. Just to <laughs> free of my mental bandwidth. I don't suggest that. But if you are in that busy scenario because you have those commitments, I get it. As you work to, to wean out that schedule and to, to make it less hectic, take some time. Stop and breathe. What, what, what's a single deep breath going to cost you? 10 seconds, right? You do three of those, 30 seconds. You have 30 seconds to lower your heart rate, to, to be less stressed, and just be at ease for just 30 seconds. Just let it go. Let, let yourself be absorbed into your breath. And you feel freer, you feel lighter, you feel calmer. And then you can go after whatever you need to go after next with a clear mind. And it's, it's incredible. I don't think people realize how much, cause like you say breathe, I'm like, well, you know, thinking most, like most people, it's like, I'm breathing all day. If I'm surviving, like I'm breathing, <laughs> right? but I don't think people realize how much just shallow breathing, stress breathing we're doing rather than just that deep, relaxed calming breath. It's crazy, isn't it? How we breathe all the time. And what's beautiful. Yeah, we're alive. We breathe. We don't have to think about it. Hip, hip, right. We've been breathing since the moment we have been born to today. 
almost all of us, I would imagine, have been breathing the entire time. And we don't think about it, which is awesome. But what happens is we start to adjust and our body's amazing at adjusting and adapting to our two different circumstances, right? We got a, a, a head cold and our nose was stuffed. So we started to breathe through our mouth. Okay, cool, right? We're still breathing. Yeah, we're still alive. But then we keep that going. And all of a sudden we become mouth breathers, right? And over time it just builds up. Well, okay, now you're breathing through your mouth. You're not cleaning the air. You're not getting your nitric oxide. You're not absorbing as much of the oxygen. You're shallow breathing, right? I, I'm huge into breath work. I, I love that stuff. So I won't, won't go down that rabbit hole. But in any case, like you're shallow breathing. You're not getting as deep of a breath. All of a sudden you have this dead air, as I like to call it, stale air in the bottom part of your lungs. Well, that's where diseases can grow, right? That's one reason why COVID was so bad for many people is because they mouth breathe and they had a lot of that dead air. You can't see my hands, but dead air in the lower part of their lungs. And all, uh, that just builds up and allow that to stew as opposed to taking those deep breaths. So if you're taking the deep breaths, it's huge for you. It does so many amazing things. Breathe in through your nose, out through your nose if you can. Breathe in through your nose or out through your mouth if you absolutely need, but preferably all nose. And just let it go sink all the way down to your belly button. Fill your air. Let your belly expand. It's okay. No one's watching. And let it go. Let's can, can we do it together real quick? Let's do it. All right. We got three breaths. I'll lead you through it. So exhale what you have. We're going to breathe in through our nose. Nice deep breath. Here we go. Breathe in. Hold it and then let go. Nice gentle exhale. We're going to do it one more or two more times. Breathe in. And exhale. One more time. We're going to take a longer inhale. Breathe in. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Hold and exhale. When you take the time to breathe deep, a nice, low, soft, deep breath, it does a couple things. It lowers your heart rate, as I said. It lowers your blood pressure. It brings your mind uh, back to the, the moment, right? So all of a sudden you're focusing right here, right now, as opposed to thinking about what's coming up in the future or what happened before, you're in the present moment. And what's truly amazing is our breath is one of the very few things that we can control uh, that, well, we, I mean, we don't have to control it, it does automatically, but we can control it. And it influences our physical bodies, our breath, our heart rate, our, our blood pressure to our minds. It's one of the very few things we can control that does both. And just by focusing on your breath, you can bring both, both of those systems to a relaxed state again within seconds. And just practicing that, practicing as in just do that two, three times a day, you'll start to see huge differences in your your mindset your attitude your energy levels and and just so much more it's absolutely incredible it's pretty fascinating i've you know i've known the importance of doing breath work and i've done like some you know over the past several years since i've started working on myself like doing meditations and just breathing and but i've just recently started working with a breath work coach that more of a like he calls himself a conscious coach and just dealing with like the subconscious and like just everything that's stored there that's holding, holding me back, me personally. And it's just so fascinating to see like the changes in my life over the past, like four weeks since I've been working with him just from like doing that breath work. So cool. What, what are some of the things you've noticed? If I may ask. Yeah. Um, biggest thing I've noticed from a, um, business perspective is I'm getting a lot more like I've, for the past like five years, I've always had like created the conversations, had to like do the work to get the people into my world. And I'm getting a lot more of those natural conversations of people coming to me um, rather than me having to do all the work, which is awesome. <laughs> it, it ties back to our thing that we talked about before, right? The energy. Now yeah. that you, you've released some of the, the walls you surrendered and you, you start focusing on your breath and just allowing your light to shine by focusing on that. Well, now all of a sudden, it's it's crazy because you're like, oh my gosh, before it seems like I was always having to work to have these conversations, to bring people into the circle and, and to help them. So I know I could serve them, but I was always having these conversations. And now you're still having those conversations, but it's almost like they're coming to you mm -hmm. as opposed to, to you forcing it and, and pushing yourself out there. It's all about aligning with your energy. Um, one great analogy I heard, and I love this, is are you walking upriver or downriver? 
or swimming upriver or downriver, or however you want to look at it. When your river is en- your energy, right? Your spirit, your energy. If you are going against it, like you're walking or swimming upriver, it's a lot harder. It's forcing those conversations. It's forcing this stuff to happen. But when things start to happen naturally, well, now you're going with the flow. It's a heck of a lot easier to swim with the current, right? To walk with it. It's a lot easier to do that. And so when you align with your energy, well, now you're going with the current and things start to happen in your favor. Um, in, in your favor, it happens more naturally or however you want to look at it. When you align and just be you, it's incredible what that world's happened because also now you're in that current, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely does. Absolutely does. Something else is coming to mind as we're talking, um, especially when we're talking about like not saying yes to everything is the whole boundaries conversation. And Mm -hmm. like, I don't know if you're like me, I have my boundaries, I do great. And then all of a sudden it's like, I let them slide. And all of a sudden then I'm like, why am I doing this? And then we have to reset again. And um, like boundaries are great when they work and then they fall off and then you have to reset them or at least in my world. (laughs) It's not just you, not just you by any means. So um, I struggle with that. And many people struggle with that as well. And boundaries are, can be a tricky thing, but let me say it this way. Boundaries can change, right? They don't have to be set in stone and they, they could change over time and that's okay. Uh, and know that we are all human. We all make mistakes. We all falter at times. That That's okay. So you pick yourself back up and you keep going. So yeah, we want to set boundaries, right? To not say yes to everything. Uh, we're saying no to more things probably than we're saying yes to. Um, and just really focusing on what am I saying yes to? Does it align with my purpose, my priorities, my values? That's the word I was thinking of before, but I couldn't think of the word um, <laughs> for whatever reason. I can't believe it. But anyway, um, so do they align? Cool, you say yes to those things. And then all of a sudden you, you get caught up in this moment and, and you say yes to something else, right? now, And you're like, oh crap, there goes that boundary, right? I set this and, and it's gone. For, this is just a random example, right? It's just gone. Okay, so you, you deal with that commitment or you maybe you see if you can get out of that or whatever. Then you come back to doing it. That's okay, right? And you go, ah oh, crap, I didn't do this. And when that happens, when we falter, when we stumble over something like that, we didn't hold up our end, even if it was to ourselves, right? The, to our own boundary. What do we do? We beat ourselves up, right? Like you said, like, oh my gosh, I, I just can't do this. All right. Or I'm, I don't think you said that directly, but it's that mindset and attitude of going, I, I suck at this. Why am I failing so much? Is it just me? And the answer is no, no, it's not just you. We all stumble. We all fall. Many of us beat ourselves up, myself included. We beat ourselves up over it and go, oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot. I can't believe I made this mistake. I told myself I wasn't going to do this, but look, I did. Oh, I'm worthless. I, I, whatever, right? And it leads you down that rabbit hole so quickly because we like to beat ourselves up for whatever reason, right? We, we like that suffering because I, I don't, I don't, I can, fat, I can guess why, I guess, but uh, I won't ponder here on that. Instead of beating ourselves up over it, how about you just take it as it is like, oh, I stumbled. What can I learn from this? Right. When I make a mistake, when things happen in my life, whether they don't go my way or I actually made the mistake, I look back on it and I pick myself up first. Right? I, I stumble. I pick myself up. But before I go forward, I, I look at it. I evaluate. I investigate what happened. Why did it happen? What can I learn and take away from this? What's the the lesson to be learned from that stumble? So I didn't hold up my boundary. Okay, dang, that sucked. All right, I'll remember that for next time. I need to hold up that boundary. Why didn't I hold it up? Oh, it's because I I was feeling really rushed and and they were pressuring me to make a choice. Okay, so I need to to watch out when when I'm feeling pressured more or be willing to say, oh, I need to take some time to do this and I, and I can work on building that up. What's, what are the different lessons, things I can work on, things I can improve on, or there's just things I need to remember when that comes up again in the future. So now all of a sudden I'm taking those, those stumbles, those falls, whatever you want to call them, right? The, the roadblocks that come up as learning opportunities. So I'm going, what's the lesson here? How can I learn? How can I grow from this? Cool. And I take that, I take that lesson, that growth with me, and I say sayonara to, to the obstacle and I keep going because now I go, all right, if that obstacle com- comes up again, I have tools to help me. 
Now, I'm not saying I'm not going to stumble again because I know I'm going to to some degree, right? But guess what? I can learn and grow again. And that's how we, we continue to improve in, in our life. If we didn't stumble, if we didn't fall, if we didn't make those mistakes, well, we wouldn't learn and grow. We'd just be like, oh, we're awesome. We're great. And it, sure, life might seem amazing at that point in time, but it's, it gets really boring. Um, at least I would imagine it would get really boring because I've never been there. I've always seemed to stumble and fall and make mistakes, but I keep getting myself up. But I will say once, let's say I didn't hold up the boundary. I learned my lesson. Then when that happens again, I'm feeling pressured. They need to answer quick. Well, now I remember, oh yeah, I remember this. Let's, let's implement that. Okay. Give myself more time. All of a sudden, all right, I got through this. I didn't stumble this time. And I feel proud. I, I feel happy. I feel more, more joy. And I know that I made the right choice because I kept to what I needed to do. I kept that boundary and I didn't stumble this time. And if I did, okay, what can I learn to take away from that? And that's okay too. The big thing is to not judge yourself or other people when they stumble. Just use it as a learning opportunity. That's awesome. And yeah, it's so true. Like just learning from the not the same mistakes you made, but just the decisions you made that didn't turn out like you won, just being able to learn from that. Um, it's really, I always laugh when about the whole self critic thing because I'm my own, I'm my own worst critic and yell at myself for all the, stupid things I do or whatever. And, uh, I can't if I read it or heard it somewhere, but someone said one, I remember like the whole phrase of like, like if you talk like this to your friends, like you won't have any friends type type statement. I'm like, it's so true. Like if all I said was the critical things I said to myself to a colleague or someone I train with, whenever I'm mad at my, like do something I don't like, we would not have any friends in the world. <laughs> no, not at all. We are our own worst enemy in so many ways because we we do that. We do little. We would not. We don't have zero friends if we talk to other people the way we talk to ourselves. Be, as you said, we are our own worst critic. My friend Sean Douglas says, "Hush the inner bully." Right? You have this inner bully, this inner critic, constantly beating you up. And the worst part is, good and bad, mostly bad in this case, they've been there since the day you were born. They know all of your faults, all of the times you stumbled, and your inner bully is going to bring it up anytime it wants to keep belittling you. I had an example of this last night. Um, you know, I, I'm human. We humans make mistakes. So uh, last night, my mind, my inner bully started bringing up one of those mistakes and just started just be going after it. And I usually don't give it the time of day. I usually counteract it by saying, okay, yep, we've learned, we've grown from this. But, and it just kept going and it kept bringing up other things and other things and other things, all the different things from the past where I stumbled and I've learned and grown from already, but it's bringing them up just to keep stacking on that weight more and more and more and more. And where then it just totally lowered my energy levels where I felt down, I felt depressed. I'm like, I started feeling like, uh, who am I? What do I do? I got this interview tomorrow. Like, uh, who am I to be doing this stuff, right? And I needed to combat it. And it was really hard. Now, thankfully, I, I, I've been doing this for some time and I know some strategies and some of these strategies are, what are you grateful for? What are the lessons you've learned? So I remind myself of, okay, what are the lessons from that opportunity or from that mistake that whatever stumble, what are those lessons? I remind myself of those, keep those in mind. I look at how much I've grown since then, going back to the our very earlier conversation. I look back to see how much I've grown. And I also go, what am I grateful for right here and now? that has helped me be, be here right now, the friends, the family, the, the people in my life, the opportunities, whatever it is, uh, that brings me back to this present moment as opposed to diving in the past and beating myself up. And I tell that inner bully, you know, I appreciate you being here, but I don't need you right now. Like, we're done, we're, you're good. Go back to the closet, go back wherever you need to go. We're done here, we're, we're hushing you. And I'm gonna focus on the good things about me the things that I love, the things that, and it's really hard at that point to say, oh, I'm good at these things. Cause you're just like, I suck at life, but <laughs> you don't suck at life. You have so many beautiful things. And it's just finding those things as small and as inconsequential as they seem at that time, they're not. So look at those, cherish them and build yourself back up. And for me, I started working on that. I went to sleep, woke up. I felt a thousand times better than I went to sleep. And I felt more energized alive. And this morning, guess what? man, that inner bully was back. 
it was after me again and trying to belittle me. And I did the same thing. I'm like, no, no, I'm not giving, I'm not even giving you the time of day because I've learned it. I've grown from it. I'm letting you go because we're good. And let's, let's focus on that. And I journaled about it, wrote my gratitude down, and it just made all the difference to now where I have my energy. I have my zest for life and I still hear it occasionally, but I just go, nope, we're good. We're good. Awesome. Yeah, that inner bully can be mean. <laughs> I, Very mean. Horrible. horrible thing. Very mean. I'm curious for you, and it may be both, but do you find that inner bully is triggered more by like other things people say to you or about you, or more on like things that you've done? Oh, good question. Um, I think it's different for every person, uh, if I'm going to be honest. For me personally, it is, um, it's a mistake I've made. Sorry, my dog's quite excited now. Um, right, aren't you Barnabas? Yeah. Um, it is more of the mistakes I've made than what, what other people have said. Now, saying that, another person could say something. A situ- I, could, I could see a situation. It could be in a movie. It could be a person saying something directly to me that then triggers that memory of a mistake I've made or that uh, whatever happened totally because I, so the, the inner boys bring up the point in that past where I made that mistake, but that was triggered by what someone else said, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So for me, it usually goes back to the mistakes I personally made or the stumbles or falls or whatever, um, that can be triggered by who knows what, by many other things. Yeah, that makes sense. Awesome. Well, Spencer, this has been a really great conversation. If anyone has any further questions for you or just wants to follow your journey, where can they find you? I appreciate you asking. Um, this has been an amazing conversation. I love this. We've gone all over the world from like fitness to, to mindset and everything between energy levels. This has been awesome. So thank you so much. Um, I would love to continue this conversation with any of your listeners or viewers. I would love to have um, just more dialogue about this or answer any questions. So. Um, Probably the best way to, to do this is to follow me on Instagram or Facebook or on TikTok. Um, uh, just look up Jonesin4, so J-O-N-E-S-I-N-F-O-R, like you're Jonesin for something, right? So you can look me up there. Um, you can also just find Spencer Jones on Facebook and connect with me there and ask questions. And I would love it, absolutely love it if you sent me a, a personal message on Instagram or Facebook. Um, you could do TikTok as well. I don't check them as often, but Instagram or Facebook and let me know one of your favorite takeaways from this and, and, and share that with uh, Brianna as well, right? So that we can know what one of your favorite takeaways were, uh, was from this. And I would just love to, to hear that. And then if you have any questions, love to chat. So you follow me there or go to my website, uh, spencermjones.com. We'd love to have you. Awesome. Well, thanks again so much for your time. This was so much fun. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and all you do for the world. So keep shining your light and to everyone here. Um, I just, I'll finish with this. Know that you are amazing. You are worthy and you are enough just the way you are. Thank you so much for having me on. Awesome. Beautiful finish.